A few days ago, I hosted a two hour live stream where I tested over a hundred dollars worth of the most popular FPV simulators. After two hours of discussing, exploring and playing each of the six simulators, I did come to the conclusion that there is indeed a clear winner. That winner, however, is beaten by a couple of others in a few subcategories. Best training program, easiest to use and most fun. So I started off by testing a free to play sim called FPV Skydive. Do keep in mind that this is free because it actually tops one of the paid for sims that we're going to cover shortly. Now, firstly, I tested the freestyle aspects of things which were alright. The physics were meh, the maps probably did need a bit of work and there was really no fun elements to you know dive or go through things that much. I then tested the racing aspects of things. You could more or less see where you should be flying and they did incorporate the racing into the maps itself which at least keeps it half interesting. So I then moved on to test the training side of things. The training was very text heavy but it did do a good job at you know getting somebody started and it locked off certain aspects of the drone to help a beginner understand what each individual stick movement does. So overall as a simulator it wasn't a terrible experience and because it's free if you have no budget at all I'd probably recommend it to you. The next sim on my list was FPV Freerider which can be purchased for $7.60. Now immediately starting off with the main menu it did visually appear to be worse than the free sim that we just tested and unfortunately it was worse, the whole simulator. The freestyle is super boring, the maps are tiny, the physics are pretty meh, and the racing was unfortunately no better. Then to top it all off, I couldn't actually find a training lesson anywhere. No training program, no beginner's part, nothing. So it kind of feels like a bit of a waste of money. It's just really confusing to me because I've seen some reviews on it that absolutely blow it out the water and say how they've purchased it three times or whatever. Yeah, I, I, why? Next up in my testing was the DRL sim. Now to give you a bit of backstory here, this is actually the simulator that I have personally used the most and that I went from zero to wherever I'm at now with. It cost $12.40, which is around $5 more than the last sim we just tested, FPV Freerider. Anyways, to kick things off, I went into freestyle flying on a map that I've never flown on before. And thankfully, I got the same experience that I am very much so used to, which is a fun, entertaining and smooth time. The physics to me are pretty good, however as mentioned in my live stream by a viewer Cliff, he says that they feel a little bit floaty in comparison to real world flying, which is completely fair to say and I just want to put another opinion in there. Anyways, after that I tried a bit of racing, which I don't generally do much of, but I did really like the red line that guides you through and just the way that you can visibly see each of the gates to go through. So. Big thumbs up to DRL for the racing side of things. They offer two training or onboarding programs, the first of which wasn't actually around when I was starting out, so it's really cool to see them continually improving on something that I already think is probably the best in the game. So yeah, DRL sim, I was definitely feeling this one, however we still did have three even more expensive simulators to test. Speaking of which, coming in at $20.50, is the trip simulator. I actually covered the sim on a live stream about six months ago when it first came out I think onto Mac so I had a bit of fun with it but I haven't played it since. So to start off I went straight into trip mode which I'm pretty sure is just another way to say freestyle mode and for those of you who don't know this entire simulator is built on what's called Unreal Engine 5. Basically put it's a game development platform that gives the developer a chance to create insane graphics and you know create a great game. You can probably see too that straight off the bat this is definitely the case for the simulator it just looks stunning that is however a massive issue for me on my macbook m1 it just really cannot handle the graphics of this game whatsoever so i then moved on to the racing and personally for me i love how it looked the gates lit up and you could pretty happily see where you need to go next this however is where the fun stops because i then moved to the training program and dear god do not train on this if your life depends on it. It's honestly at the point where I think it's so difficult that if you are a beginner trying this out, you may very well just end up quitting and not trying again. There are no movement locks, there's no dumbing down of the sensitivity, so you're at full sensitivity the whole time. And uh, to make it even better, the text has a whole bunch of spelling and grammar errors throughout it, which isn't what you'd expect from a $20 simulator. So I'll give the trip simulator a massive thumbs up for experience, but a massive thumbs down for the training. Next up I headed into a very popular sim that I've honestly never tried before. That sim is called Liftoff and it cost $30. Now I did also add on an additional pack here called the Slipstream pack for $5.20 which brings the overall cost of the simulator to $35.20. Basically the Slipstream pack adds in elements like chasing cars and massive trucks, planes, you name it. So I definitely think it's a worthy addition. Anyways to start me off I went and did some free flying around one of the non-Slipstream maps and immediately was just hit with basically a perfect combo of the fun experience of DRL and the beautiful graphics of Trip. Just 
perfectly combined. And then not only that, the physics here, they've just got to be the best that I've tested so far. After this, I headed over to the racing, which was good, but I did have one big gripe of actually being able to visibly see where you're going next. The arrows were pretty confusing and it just didn't really scream out fun to me. Maybe you can just get used to that as you fly more on liftoff. Now usually I'd go and test out the training mode but we'll get to that in a second because there's actually a third exclusive mode called freestyle mode but it's not quite the same as everyone else's. This freestyle mode actually allows you to go in perform tricks, do dives, go through spaces, and you get points for it. Now, that doesn't sound crazy cool, but holy crap, does it actually make freestyling on simulators so much more fun? Now, this does happen to be where my excitement kind of leaves a little bit because, in my opinion, the training lessons are a bit subpar. They're just videos, and then you sort of semi-integrate them into the game itself, but not quite because the videos are just hosted on YouTube. So, it feels a bit disconnected, and I definitely think they could improve this a lot, but I guess it does help you learn, it's just a different style of learning and not personally as interactive as DRL was. So overall this simulator definitely is getting very high up there on the rankings but we still have one more simulator to go that is more expensive yet. Introducing Velocidrone, the most expensive simulator at $32.30. Now again I also bought an additional pack called the Freestyle Pack which introduces the same elements as the Liftoff Slipstream Pack but that pack came in at $9.50 bringing the total to $41.80 so that's getting pretty up there for a simulator you know anyways that aside same as all the other sims I went into freestyle mode and tested that out straight off the bat I do love how the quad flies in it it feels probably better than liftoff I'd say it's very very realistic they've got the physics nailed but that's honestly the only positive thing I can say about this sim when I compare it to everything else for me the graphics are pretty mediocre it's very expensive it takes up something like 37 gigabytes of space on your computer which is a big big game and then to put a cherry on top there's no training lessons whatsoever either so that brings us on to the simulator that I conclude as the best FPV sim for 2023. Starting off with the subcategories, the best training program easily goes to DRL Sim. That means that if you're a newbie, look no further than that and just go and purchase it. It's super cheap in comparison to a lot of the others and it really does offer the most immersive and most educational experience possible for starting out. The next subcategory is the easiest to use Sim, which goes to Liftoff. It's pretty simplistic, but also very feature rich, which is a telltale sign of a great user interface. And then the final subcategory is the most fun simulator and I'm gonna give that to trip FPV I would honestly give liftoff the same subcategory too but for the sake of the humongous maps and the hyper realism of the experience within trip I do think it deserves this and it is a lot of fun to play if only it actually worked on my MacBook so with all that in mind now you may be wondering what the top FPV simulator is for 2023 and after multiple hours of researching and testing although it may be a bit pricey this title belongs to liftoff so yeah, let me know down below if you agree and uh, also make sure to subscribe.